Okay, you should see a record button going on. So that should indicate to you that we're actually, just a heads up on this. Uh, if you use the texting option, that's also being recorded, even if you're texting privately to any one other individual in, in the uh, meeting, just so that you know that's being recorded as well. So if you're saying anything bad about me, I'm gonna read it and it's gonna, it's gonna upset me and you don't wanna upset me, okay? So just be nice and say really nice things, all right? Or don't say anything at all if you don't wanna say anything nice. That's the best, that's the best kind of motto. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We're gonna go ahead and get into the classroom. I'm gonna, uh, while I do that, I'm gonna get up and uh, shut my office door because there's gonna be people moving in my office or in, in the office and I'm gonna be making some noise. Okay, uh, you should be able to see on your, on your screens a Zoom picture. Do you guys see that? Yes. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Canvas. This will be what you will be required to do whenever you go into the Canvas login. You'll have to enter your username and password. You will do so. And then you will choose your Canvas option. And uh, you should come to the dashboard of your Canvas app. And in the uh, dashboard, you should be able to see Business mathematics. I've actually enclosed a kind of a not so clear picture of your textbook, but business mathematics and the CRN is 20058. Let's go into that. Okay, so this is your home page. When you whenever you get right into Canvas, you'll see business mathematics, and this is a picture of the textbook. Uh, the textbook is required. Not necessarily a physical book, but we'll talk more about that when we get to the syllabus. All right, uh, I'm scrolling down here and I'm trying to think, uh, can I get any hint on where I should maybe click? Any hints at all? I'm, I'm confused now. I, I guess I just got confused. Where, where should I click? Start here. Oh my goodness. How about we do that? Let's click on start here. All right, now when you click on start here, you'll see that there are four links. The most important links that you need at this point in time are gonna be your syllabus. So let's go ahead and click on it. All right, so now we have the syllabus. Uh, you have the office phone. I've also included my cell number in case you need it. So, and this is my email address. Uh, for the most part, uh, I'm very responsive to emails. So that would be the best way because I'm constantly checking all day. Uh, my cell phone, you know, that could be hit or miss because, you know, when I'm working, I'm not always answering my cell phone. And if I don't recognize the number, there's a good chance that I'll just ignore it and let it go to voicemail. And then I'm not as um, good at looking at voicemails on my, on my cell phone as I am on checking my emails regularly. So, so email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. This is your, uh, the textbook that's required. It's the 14th edition. And these are the authors. Uh, it should be set up in the uh, bookstore, the COS bookstore, set up so that you can get that. Now, you, uh, when you go to the bookstore, you do have the option of just, of just getting the card itself. I think it's online, it's about 60 some dollars. I don't know what it is at the bookstore. And then you'll see that there'll be some physical books there as well. Uh, you, you don't necessarily have to get a physical book from the bookstore you do need the my lab okay so those, that's one way to actually go now if if you don't get the physical book at the bookstore you will need it either when you sign up for my lab you will have the option of adding an ebook to it which will cost a few extra dollars all right um so when we'll actually get when we actually look at signing up but okay in a nutshell the way it works is that you do need a book but you could go with the ebook if you sign on in my math lab, uh, you will. If you just ignore going to the bookstore and you just sign up right through through the links in Canvas, you will get an option to either just buy this the access card, which is about sixty some dollars, or you will have a hundred dollar option, hundred something dollar option, and that's going to include an ebook. All right. If you are comfortable with that, if you're comfortable, then you that'll be fine. You could just go with the ebook. 
but you have to be comfortable with ebooks as well. Sometimes people don't really care for them. They want a physical book. Um, you can do this. Uh, you don't have to have a physical book. Now, if you would like a physical book, the bookstore does have them, but they're pretty expensive, I believe. Um, you can actually rent this book, I think, uh, through Amazon or any trusted, trusted type organization or company that's out there uh, renting them out. Uh, be careful, though. You don't want to go to iScrewStudents.com because you'll end up getting screwed, right? So there's a lot of bad people out there that are they're taking money away from students. So be careful where you go. Make sure you, wherever you go, it's reputable, all right? Um, I'll go through the process of, of actually signing up online. Now, if you buy the book from the bookstore, you're going to get an access code or uh, an access code. So you'll use that code. But I must tell you, you do not follow the instructions uh, from, the t uh, from the books that you buy at the bookstore. You, the, quick, my lab is actually embedded in Canvas. So the instructions are going to uh, tell you from the textbooks to go to my lab, mymathlab.com and sign up. And then it's going to ask you for a course key. And there is no course key because my, my, uh, because my lab is actually embedded in Canvas. Every time you click on any assignment or anything you need to do in Canvas, that's going to take you to a screen where you can actually complete those assignments. So just remember, my math lab is embedded in Canvas. And every time you go and do homework, you go into Canvas to make that happen. A course key is not required. Register for my math lab through the links in Canvas. OK? All right, there's uh, more information on contacting me. Um, let me go ahead and minimize this so that, um, so that you don't have anything blocked. Uh, the course description is listed there. You can read through that student learning outcomes. You can read through that. The assignments, uh, you can read through that. Attendance and makeup here. This is important. Uh, no miss exams or quiz may be made up. There is no extra credit in this course. Okay, late assignments are not accepted. Um, scrolling down. There's some general policies that I keep when I'm usually having this in the classroom. This is a normally a classroom, uh, classroom class that's been converted to online. Here is the breakdown of the grade and the points, the number of assignments, the points, the total, and the weight. Okay, so um, you can review that as well. Final exam meeting date is on Friday, May 15, 2021, from 8:10 to 10 a.m. This is required as far as my contract is concerned. I have to be, make sure that I have a final exam meeting date. By the way, this will be in Zoom. Um, you will not be required to be there, but I will be just like I'm, uh, technically I'm not even required to have these classrooms, but we'll go over my schedule and I'll show you what I am doing. And so I'm treating this final exam meeting date exactly the way I treat my uh, classes. So just note it. You won't have to be there, but if you have any final questions about the course, uh, anything about the exam itself or any previous item, uh, I will be on Zoom available for you. Okay, so um, that's, that's pretty much everything that uh, associated with the syllabus. Are there any questions about the syllabus? I'm gonna go in and show you how to sign up for my lab in just a bit, but any other questions about what's listed on the syllabus? I just have one question about the final exam. Yeah. Um, is that uh, done online or through Zoom? So it's, it's all done online. It, it'll, all the exams, including the final, will be exactly the same. It'll be done through my math lab. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to um, Canvas. Let's go back to the course calendar. Second most important document that you're going to need, especially it becomes the most after we get started and everything is set up. But right now, you have to set everything up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then we'll take a look. Okay, so the first week starts this week, it started on the 11th and ends on the 17th. 
what we're doing is syllabus review, the optional Zoom meeting. We've already worked, that's what we're in right now. Uh, it says see my lab homework, but there's nothing that's actually going to be due this week. So, um, and it does say uh, see participation requirements. I do want you to look at the participation requirements. Um, and we'll take a look at that when we look online as well. Uh, next week, which starts on the 18th and ends on the 24th, we go into chapter one. There will be specific my lab assignments that are due. And although the week technically ends on the 24th, Sunday the 24th, that's 11.59 p.m. the week ends, I do go ahead as a convenience for the students to be able to submit the next day, Monday the 25th, at 4 p.m. for a couple of reasons. One, because I don't like to deal with people sending me, sending me emails on Sunday evening telling me about technical problems that, you know, I don't even look at my emails on Sunday evening. So um, if, we, if I give it to you on Monday at 4 p.m., then there's a better chance we can address any technical issues before then. The second reason is that I have one more office hour that I have scheduled on Monday that you can visit me if you have any last minute questions. So if I were you, I would take advantage of the fact and just assume that it's due on the 24th. If I get stuck on something, I'll hold off and then I'll visit me on Monday the next day in the morning because I will show you what my office hours are and you can start to ask me any final questions before you actually do the uh, finish up your homework, okay? And then you do have participation requirements, which we'll talk about in just a bit. And then from there, it becomes pretty routine. Uh, we cover a chapter every week chapter two, three, in uh, week four, in addition to the chapter three, you will also have a, a uh, test, exam number one, chapters one, two, and three. Those are all due on Mondays. They're all due on the Monday following the end of the date, and they're all due at 4 p.m. Okay, keeps going on, keeps going on. There's just uh, routine, very systematic. We do have a spring break on there. The week before spring break, you'll see that your actual assignments for chapter 10 are not going to be due on the 9th. They're going to be due on the following 5th because that, if I make it the 29th, then uh, you know, I'm not going to be on during spring break, so you'll miss out on my office hours. So I make it the 5th, which you know I will be online for the office hours in case you have questions. We'll scroll down. The final exam is listed in the final week 18. It is due Friday, May 14th at 4 p.m. Remember, I'm keeping everything consistent. All the assignments are due at 4 p.m. We do have a final exam meeting date scheduled for uh, the same day, but at 8, 10 to 10. But uh, for the most part, that's again gonna be just so that if you have any questions, issues, or concerns, you can come online. It'll be a Zoom meeting. You can come online and talk to me about it, but, but you don't have to worry about the final exam until 4 p.m. on that day, okay? Are there any questions about the calendar, course calendar? All right, let's go back to Zoom, or I'm, I'm sorry, let's go back to uh, Canvas. Um, we've, got the, we've got links here, My Lab Registration, which gives you some indication of what you need to do for registering. It's pretty straightforward. And then you have a link here for Canvas support. Uh, my lab, when you go to my lab and registration, it's going to be difficult for me to actually show you what it looks like. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty, but you can click. It looks different than here. It says like sign up or get registered or whatever. You'll click on this link and then I think there might be a video here that shows you how it all works, but you're going to immediately be prompted for a Pearson account. Uh, if you have ever had my lab before, you can go ahead and just sign in if you remember your username and password. Likely it should, it should be your COS email account. So, um, and then if you forgot your password, just click on that link that says, forgot my password, you'll get a, a link that goes to your email and you can reset your password. Otherwise, uh, if you don't have an account, you'll be asked to register for Pearson and you'll be asked for a username and, and, and then your regular name and, and all the information that you would normally expect, just like if you were signing up for anything else. Um, then once you've got your account set up, then that's when you're going to have to go ahead and choose some options for either paying for the course immediately or using a 14-day trial period. 
um, you do have 14 days to pay for it. So if you don't have the cash or your financial aid hasn't come in yet, you're good to go for 14 days. But after those 14 days, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to beg or borrow to make sure you could get signed up for this course because I just wanna remind you, late assignments are not accepted. There are, there, there are some exceptions to the rules, but I can tell you the exception is only gonna be, uh, for example, a medical emergency some type of unforeseen type of circumstance. The other example I could give you is uh, last year we had some fires or last semester we had some fires that were up uh, by the uh, um, Three Rivers area and there were some students there. So we certainly made some accommodations for, for that kind of situation. Work related kind of accommodations will not, will not go. If you're backed up at work, you're gonna have to figure out a way to get your homework done still, okay? Um, all right, so the, uh, there, if you click on modules, that's where the majority of the information is as well. We've already looked at the course calendar. Uh, the, the very first top module is start here. You, you see the course syllabus, calendar. Let's take a look at the re, uh, participation requirements. That's something we haven't reviewed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reduce this so that we have more screen here. Okay, so students will be required to participate in weekly online discussions. The online week begins on Monday, 12 a.m. and ends on Sunday, 11.59. Okay, so, so that we are clear, the online week ends on Sunday at 11.59. Remember, I give you an additional amount of time for submitting your homework, but that's not going to be the case for your participation requirements. You're going to have to submit or meet your participation requirements during the week. Starts on Monday in the morning and ends on Sunday evening. Each week, the instructor will post discussion questions in the discussion forum located in Canvas during the online week. Students will be required to reply to one uh, message that contains two well-developed paragraphs and clearly addresses the discussion questions. Or you're gonna be posting one reply message that contains two well-developed paragraphs and clearly addresses the discussion questions. The instructor will not consider a single sentence paragraph as well developed. So you have to elaborate. Now the questions are set up so that this is pretty easy. They're, you're gonna find it difficult to answer some of these questions with just one paragraph anyway. So, so this will probably be the easiest. You will post one message with replying to two discussion questions. Okay, it'll be two discussion questions and they have to be uh, two paragraphs. So it's two well-developed paragraphs, okay? Then from then you're gonna re be required to post two replies to two different students, all right? You're gonna be showing evidence of critical thinking and meaningful interaction with the posting, as well as course resources. And you're gonna be asking engaging questions or providing insight into the discussion. All right, so uh, it says substantive. What is substantive? Both quality I'm sorry, both quantity and quality are important considerations when posting substantive messages. For example, I agree by itself is not considered substantive because it does not add anything of substance to the discussion. A single sentence post will not be considered substantive. So I don't care what you write on one single sentence, it will not be considered substantive, it will be ignored. Students will earn 50% of the weekly discussion points by responding to the initial discussion questions. So this is post one reply that contains two well-developed paragraphs. This is 50%. Students will then earn 25% of the weekly discussion points for each substantive reply to other students. So these two replies, each of them will be worth 25%. Student messages posted to the questions thread will not count towards participation. There is a question thread that we'll look at right now, but that won't count as your participation for that week. Okay, so uh, the way it's gonna work, if you reply to the DQs, there's two questions, you'll put the two uh, paragraphs in play and you will be good to go, you'll get 50%. Then uh, you need to re uh, post two replies if a reply is substantive, you will get 
uh, 25%. Uh, and if one of them is substantive and the other one is not, then you will only get 25%. If both of them are not substantive, you will get zero or you won't get, you will get 20, uh, you won't get the 25% each of these. Okay. So, um, if you get both of them and both of them are substantive, then you will get 25 and 25. And if you got the, the reply to, to the initial discussion question, you'll get 50% there and that'll give you hundred percent of the points. So you will either earn zero, 25% for one substantive repost, uh, 50% for two substantive reposts or the reply to the discussion questions. And then 15% uh, or I'm sorry, 75% for responding to the discussion question and maybe one of the uh, replies or 100%. That would be meeting all the requirements. Okay, are there any questions about, about participation? Let's go ahead and take a look at like an example. I don't know if you currently have access to the anyone. You have your introduction thread, which this is not graded. It is optional. Um, it is due on, or it is available to the 24th. Um, so you can do that whenever you want. Let's take a look at discussion question two, which you won't have access to until Monday, but that'll give you kind of a feel of what, oh, I guess there's only one question. So. You'll be required to uh, post one reply that contains two well-developed paragraphs. So reply, if sale, for example, if sales increase by 1,500 in, week, in a week, do you think profit for the week will also be increased by $1,500? Why or why not? So this should be, the questions are pretty open-ended. And in fact, they're actually the case and point summary exercises at the end of the chapter. So if you have the textbook, You'll go back and read the case itself at the end of the, of the chapter, and then you'll respond to this discussion question, and you'll have to meet those requirements. Okay, so that's an example of, of what the discussion question will be for week two. Let's take a look at week three. Complete the case and point summary exercise, the Home Depot, at the end of chapter two. You'll read that case. And then, then you have, do you think that exact measurements are important component of quality from the standpoint of a customer at the Home Depot? What are the other important components of quality? Okay, so it'll be pretty easy for you to meet the, the uh, by the way, uh, I'm not looking for right or wrong answers. There's no grading uh, process for these discussion questions. I'm just looking for participation and that you meet the requirements here, okay? So, um, all right, now, so now that we've seen a couple of, extra, of examples, are there still any questions about the discussions? So the discussion is due the, by Sunday night, Sunday night by midnight, right? It was the homeworks Monday before. 11.59. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's going to be Sunday, and then your homework assignments are being extended out to the following Monday. Okay, let's go back to modules. We've covered the calendar, the syllabus, participation requirements. Um, I think this is a video. Let's go see. Oh no, these are just checking your systems to make sure that you've got everything you need for. Here's my contact information. Here's Canvas support information. And again, here are the participation requirements. I guess that's doubled up. So let me, let me get rid of that. It doesn't require to be there twice. Okay, so what I don't have here is my office hours. So let me go ahead and add that. Um, let's see. Comes to school one drive. Spring 2021. And the spring 2021 schedule. Okay. 
Let's add that file. Okay, so uh, now in the start here, you can also see that Andy Spring 2021 schedule. Okay, so here is my schedule. Um, you will see that uh, every morning between 8, 10, and 10, I have a class that I'm holding online. And on Fridays, this class, I will be online from 8, 10 to 11 on Zoom. You are not required to be here. This is for you to be able to come to me and ask any questions that you have about your homework assignments, okay? I, uh, the lectures themselves that I normally have that I can do in class are actually posted in Canvas. So there are videos there that uh, try to mirror what we do in the classroom. So in essence, the students are getting the best of both worlds. You are actually getting the videos that, is, that cover the classroom lectures that I would normally do in the class. And you're getting me making myself available between the same time that we would be normally meeting between 8 and 11 a.m. on Fridays. Now that doesn't, that, that, um, that, that means that you can come in. You do not have to come in on Fridays. This is an asynchronous class. So there's no requirement ever for you to be online. Me being online is my responsibility and it's my commitment to all of you to provide you access to me if you have any questions. Okay, so, um, so in addition to Fridays, you'll see that I have these office Zoom hours. Now, you can come on these times as well because um, it may be that there's no, students aren't coming in and asking me questions for these classes, so you can come in. But if, if a student from this course comes in, I may have to put you into uh, the waiting room for a little while until I can come back to you. But during the uh, office Zoom hours, there's between 10 and 11 every day, every morning, I'm available to everybody. So this is gonna be first come, first serve. You come in and if you ask me questions, I will address your questions during this period of time as well. Uh, after, after 11, then, it, then it's gonna be really relegated to sending me emails to me, which can work. You can ask me questions about a specific assignments and, and um, I can get back to you that way as well. But uh, if you want to see me and go over some things live through Zoom, this is the time to do it between 8, 10, and 11 in the morning. Now, you might have already noticed that when I post my, when I actually have my office hours, I post announcements. So you might have been annoyed by seeing these announcements coming to you that I'm available from 10 to 11, which is a good thing because that tells you that I'm there and that reminds you that I'm available for for your questions or concerns, okay? So are there any questions about my uh, availability for office hours and also the classroom time? Are there any questions at all? Okay, so let's go back to Canvas and see if we can get this kind of finalized here. We've got the modules. We've gone through Andy Spring. Zoom meetings, this was just a reminder of when we're at. If you want, uh, whenever, let, let's say I tell you that I'm online and, and I, I don't have an announcement, you can always go to this link and, and go. If, if I'm in classroom, you'll, you'll be able to find me there as well. All right, um, here are the lecture videos that I've created. I've done my very best to try to uh, emulate what I do in the classroom. Uh, it's not as good as being in the classroom. It's actually a, uh, less interactive, but but they're but they are there and they will help you. Uh, they should be able to help you through through your homework assignments if you have questions. Okay. And then then we start with the weeks. Week one we have our discussions thread, which is a not graded and op optional. That's the introduction. You you can or can you can participate, but if you choose not to, that is fine as well. And then um, we go on to week two. You'll see that I went ahead and included in the module for week two, the chapter one lecture video. In case you don't wanna go back to the lecture, you just have it right there. You have the week two discussions, which we went over and looked at just a bit ago. 
and then you have your chapter homework and your chapter quiz. Now you can use these links immediately to go to the homework in my lab. In fact, that's what you're supposed to do. Use those links to go to the homework and complete the homework within, um, within my lab. Now you don't, I don't know if you, well, you know, you already have access to it. So the due dates are listed here, but don't get confused. This says G January 24th, that is 11.59 p.m. That's Sunday. This is Monday. It doesn't say 4 p.m. on here. I get it. If you click on it, I think it might, let's see. Yeah, it says it right here, 4 p.m. All right, and then there's all your assignments. You can just click on it and start working on it. Um, so, and then in addition to that, in the course calendar, which we've actually looked at already, it clearly shows that your assignments are due at 4 p.m., okay? So don't get confused. Your discussions are due at 11.59 on Sunday, 11.59 p.m., and your Assignments are due on Monday at 4 p.m. Except for the final exam, and that's going to be due on Friday at 4 p.m. All right, let's go to modules. And uh, the one thing that is not here as well is, I'll go ahead and put it here. Is, um, let's see, discussion, and it's the questions thread. So let me add that as well. So under the start here, there is a question thread. I just put it here. So if you have any questions associated with this class, which it looks like Michael already posted one, I'm pretty good at replying to these as well. Let's see, Sunday, Monday, I replied. I don't know. Probably, I don't know what time did you post that, Michael? Uh, I don't know exactly in the morning, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sundays I'm not really online, so that Monday when I when I came in, I posted so. Anyway, so you can see there's a questions thread that allows you to post questions. Now, I will tell you that if you have specific questions about a grade of some sort, this is not the place to post it because I cannot discuss graded items with you in Canvas. That is a FERPA violation. We can't do that. I do have it subscribed, though, so that means that when you post anything, I do get an email that tells me that something is here so that I can go in and try to respond as quickly as possible. So if you have general questions, just like Michael uh, had, then that's, those are, those are a really good example of what you can, and then I'll reply to you. Uh, but if you have specific questions about a grade or how something worked in a specific assignment, the better way to do it is, there's actually two ways. Uh, in my lab, you can click on Ask My Professor, and it'll send me actually a link that allow me to go see what you've already done, and then and be able to give you some guidance that way. Um, or uh, you, can, um, you can send me an email and, and I'll see if I can help you in that respect as well. Okay. All right, let's go back to the modules. Let's make sure I've covered everything. I think I did. Lecture videos, and then from then on, we just have every week listed as modules. And you can complete your assignments. All right, so uh, my question to you, are there any other questions about the course itself? Let me go ahead and stop sharing. I can always come back to it. Uh, any questions at all about the course schedule, my syllabus, anything for this course at all? I could hear, is that somebody's puppy? Yes, that's mine, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I enjoy hearing the little paws of puppies or dog because we haven't had a dog for a long time, so I think we need to get a dog. Okay, um, if there are no questions, then I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting. Um, and again, I'm available to you if you need. Uh, we can as well if we have to, because if the timing doesn't work for you, you can always email me and we can set up a, a private Zoom meeting where we can go over some assignments if we need to. So 
we're not locked into those dates and times that are available on the, or that are set on the uh, my calendar, I certainly will, will do my best to make myself available to you at other times as well. All right. Okay, if there are no questions, I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting. Have a wonderful semester, keep yourself safe. And we shall see you guys when I see you guys. I may not see you guys again for the rest of the semester, but if, but if I do, then I will see you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.